Public debates help to set the tone for our society. What happens in our politics shapes what we experience in our daily lives. At the moment, because of our public debates, there are some groups in our society who stand more vulnerable than ever to racism. A few weeks ago, I received a letter from a woman here in Sydney who got racially abused in a local cafe. Another customer came around to her and told her to go back to China declaring that all Chinese are communists. Last month, while holding a stall in Redfern, Jenny Leong, a Greens MP in the New South Wales Parliament, was harangued by a woman who said to her, I know your plan. We are now all second-class citizens because you Chinese are taking over. These are some of the effects of debates about a silent invasion by the Chinese Communist Party. We shouldn't be surprised that some people may vent racial hostility at people of Chinese backgrounds if they're being told that there is a threat from communist China. There's the more insidious impact, the powerful chilling effect that debates can have on Chinese Australian citizens. Many fear speaking out in public debates now, lest they get smeared as being agents of foreign influence. If we're not more careful, we may end up demanding that Chinese Australians work many times harder than others to demonstrate their loyalty to this country. We may end up, in other words, with what may only be described as the form of racial discrimination justified as concern about national sovereignty. Within Sudanese Australian communities, there are many people who are fearful about leaving their homes now, who are sheltering from society. And this affects Australians who have other African backgrounds too. Young African Australians in Melbourne have told me of occasions when they've walked to sporting events as a group, only to be stopped in the street because members of the public have called police, fearing they were marauding gang members. In my work, I've heard regularly from Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people about experiences of being stopped in stores or subjected to searches or being denied service by businesses or by taxis. Australians from Arab and Middle Eastern backgrounds, those from Asian backgrounds, they too have had to contend with the sting of racial stereotyping. In the time when I was growing up as a teenager, for example, I know that talk about Asian gangs and so-called Asian ghettos in the suburbs made many young Asian Australians feel disgraced and humiliated. It made many question their very place in this country. Authorised by Shen Narayanasamy, Get Up Limited, Collingwood.